Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thanks to all of you, including John and Becky Johnston, Chris Benito, Steve Iadarola, and brand new patron Lawrence. Yay, Welcome in, Lawrence. Lawrence. Welcome. On this episode of DTNS, why is Pal World so popular when everyone seems to hate it? Plus, Apple's strategy to get into the AI race, and Ring takes a step back from helping law enforcement. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, January 24th, 2024. Huh, in Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Animal House, I am Sarah Lane. Adjacent to the Great Salt Lake, I am Scott Johnson. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Roger, are you adjacent to any bodies of water? Uh, a bathtub. <laughs> wow. Well, adjacent to the great bathtub. Wow. It's impressive. Yeah. Sink. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Toilet. I, I All guess sorts the of ocean of water. is the closest I am. I, I am. And what's the lake that's over in Griffith Park? I'm like oh, halfway uh, between uh, that. Uh, and the ocean. Something. Oh, I, Echo. No, Echo. No, I'm thinking of no, Lake Elysian. Lake. One. No. Lake no. made up. Lake shouldn't be there, but we dug a big hole. We live I in like LA. That. We swear. <laughs> We're real people. We're not AI. All right. <laughs> let's, let's just give that up and go for the quick hits. That's what we're here for. Apple may introduce more fees and restrictions as it starts allowing people to download apps outside of the iPhone's closed ecosystem. That's in response to DMA regulations in the EU. Apple may review each app downloaded outside of its app store, and sources tell the Wall Street Journal that the company also plans to collect fees from developers that offer downloads outside of the app store. Those plans may yet change before Apple officially delivers them to the European Commission for approval. The commission will evaluate whether Apple's plan will make the market more open and meets the provisions of that DMA, also known as the Digital Markets Act. Apple has until March to comply. I was trying to think of Silver Lake. How embarrassing is that? It's very embarrassing. Oh, the reservoir. It's not even really a lake. I know. X announced support for pass keys. If you're on iOS and you live in the U.S. Uh, Passkeys is the secure way to log into a service without having to memorize a password. It's supported by the major operating systems and browsers, so we've just been waiting for a critical mass of websites to adopt it before we can ditch passwords altogether. X follows PayPal, TikTok, WhatsApp, a bunch of others in the slow march of services adopting it, but everyone counts. Uh, no word on when X might bring passkey support to non-iOS operating systems or non-U.S. countries, but I bet the SEC wishes they had had it earlier this year. Be Real, the social app that launched okay. as a way to be more authentic and less staged as a social network, announced that starting February 6th, brands and celebrities will be able to sign up as real brands or real people so that fans can watch both share behind-the-scenes moments from their lives and work. Alongside the announcement, Be Real told TechCrunch it now has 23 million daily active users. That's up from 20 million in August of 2023. The company also has introduced some new features like groups, mentions, multiple posts per day, used to only be able to do it once, pinned posts, and a friend of friends feed. A recent Pew study reported that around 13% of U.S. teens use be real hmm. now i can see people really using collagen supplements and all <laughs> kinds of other things uh twitch is changing how it shares revenue with its streamers and it's mostly an increase uh first of all streamers no longer see their percentage drop after the first hundred thousand dollars shared uh the split's going to stay 70 percent they used to drop to 50 percent uh to qualify for the 70 percent revenue share you now only need 300 plus points not 350 Go, go look it up if you want to know what a plus point is. Uh, new tier will start going, uh, giving you 60% of revenue after you get 100 plus points. Uh, so there's an uh, earlier entry into getting some revenue as well. On the downside, starting June 3rd, the amount shared from members who use Amazon Prime to pay for a subscription will be calculated from a fixed rate instead of what is happening now where it's paid the same as if it was paid by cash. NVIDIA RTX GPU owners have a new feature called RTX Video HDR, which uses AI to convert SDR color space video to HDR, as long as you have an HDR10 compatible monitor with HDR enabled in Windows. NVIDIA's RTX Video Super Resolution can upscale old blurry web videos. We talked about that in the past. But the HDR feature is part of today's 551.23 game ready driver release for the new RTX 4070 Ti Super launch. Works in both Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome. Amazon owned Ring is scrapping 
It's request for assistance feature in the Neighbors app. They're trying to pivot the Neighbors app to be more about community building and like, I I found a cat uh, or uh, whose package is this? Uh, not crime. Um, request for assistance was the feature that let the police get on your Neighbors app and then ask for doorbell footage that was near an investigation that might help provide information. So going forward, police will have to obtain a warrant for almost all of their video requests. Yeah, so police can still request clips from Ring um, and from somebody who has a Ring if they consider an event an emergency. Uh, you know, they're looking for a kidnapped kid or, you know, there's a murder or some, you know, yeah. something that's an emergency. In fact, Amazon's Yossi Yarger confirmed uh, in a statement to The Verge that on rare occasions, Ring will provide information to law enforcement when there's kind, when there is an imminent danger of death or serious physical injury Again, kidnapping, attempted murder. Google will currently show footage from Nest devices to police in emergencies with no warrant acquired. So required. So this is not totally a, a ring thing. Um, these these you know all the big companies um, who have these sorts of security um, systems that they sell to people are kind of going through through this. Tom, I know you have a ring doorbell. I do. Yeah. Is that have you ever been in a situation where anyone's asked you for footage? No. Uh, and good luck if they do, because I don't pay for the storage. So mm. there is no stored video on my ring doorbell. I can use it to see someone when they're there and that's it. Um, but that did, wouldn't have stopped somebody from trying to ask me about it. Uh, and, yeah. and they haven't, uh, I've seen, I've heard some of my neighbors talk about like, Oh, we saw the coyote on the ring doorbell, but that's as, as close as we've ever gotten to stuff like that, which is what they want the neighbors app to be about. Right. About coyotes, not not uh, crime. I do think this is somewhat misunderstood because there's a little bit of a ring is guilty until proven innocent uh, in the minds of public. And I'm not saying it's ill deserved. Ring has done some things in the past that that make people not want to give them the benefit of the doubt. But essentially what they're doing here is saying we already told the police they can't go to you directly to get your ring stuff. We're not going to give them contact information or anything like that. Uh, we are now going to take away the only remaining in ring universe way of contacting, which is through the neighbor's app. We're not even going to let them do that. If a policeman is out investigating and you talk to him and you agree to give him your ring footage, that's between you and the police, but ring is not going to be involved in helping them in any way. Right. So if you've got some, some crazy uh, porch piracy going on, in your neighborhood, there's nothing stopping you from saying, "Oh, an officer." If you if you can like, hand that fo footage, footage in, yeah, yeah. absolutely, exactly. Yeah. But that's on you to do. There, uh, if there's an investigation and they 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 want to just say, "Hey, anybody in this zip code got footage?" They can't do that. They're going to have to go knock door to door and ask you directly, um, and they're not going to get Ring's assistance in that. Is, right. is is the difference, right? Ring, ring at one time would give people like, hey, these people had their ring on. You can go talk to them. They don't do. They haven't done that in a long time. Now they're not even letting uh, cops have access to the neighbors app. I mean, or a not, lot of not a for lot investigations of, anyway. They can still post public safety announcements. And right, stuff like that. of course. Yeah, and it's like, I mean, for people being like, well, why wouldn't we care about crime? I mean, if there is a, situ a crime situation, then of course. I mean, part of having you know security footage is to keep yourself safe. This. Sounds to me like, okay, well, if I had a, you know, a nice porch with a cool chair, maybe I'd sit outside and see lots of stuff. And, you know, in cases where, you know, we can't do that, that's what a ring camera is providing. Tom, sure. you don't have recorded uh, video stored up. Some people do. But um, this this doesn't seem really different than, yeah, somebody, let's say a police officer coming up and being like, you know, something happened about 30 minutes ago. Did you happen to be around? I mean, that in itself is not an issue. It's how yeah. they can contact people that um, has been has been pulled back a bit. Right. And your rights as a citizen remain the same, uh, yeah. what they were before. The, none of this isn't like some law change. This is just policy change on the on the part of Ring. And it might be interesting. I'm going to do this later today. I haven't done it. But I want to go see what Wise's policy is. I use their uh, Ring doorbell camera. And it works very similarly in almost every way. In fact, it kind of even looks like a ring doorbell uh, style-wise, but uh, I don't know what their policy is for my cloud footage, and there is cloud footage for that. So if you're concerned about it and you're not using ring, um, chances are they either have a policy or you could pressure them to make one at some yeah. point. 
All right, let's talk about AI. A lot of folks have wondered why Apple's not in the conversation. We always talk about Microsoft and OpenAI. We talk about Google. We talk about Anthropic and uh, uh, all these others uh, out there, Reality uh, Labs. Uh, Financial Times has an article looking into Apple's AI strategy because they do have one. They've talked about it a little bit here and there. And looking at this Financial Times article, I think it's very Apple-y. So Scott and 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 Sarah, uh, tell me if you agree. Okay. Um, here's here's what I here. Tell me if you agree. This is the premise with things like chips and the iPhone. Apple's strategy has always been: don't be first to market, buy up a bunch of talent, release a user focused version of the product, and pitch it as superior. Does that sound yeah. right? That's yeah. that's that is the Apple mo. Yeah, that is I the agree. way. Okay. Here's what Financial Times found. Apple has bought 21 AI-related startups since the beginning of 2017. Uh, They also hired Google's AI executive, John John Andrea, in 2018, who's been working on this since. Morgan Stanley says close to half of Apple's recent job postings include the term deep learning. So we've got the not first to market. We've got the buying up the talent. Uh, now we're just waiting on the release of user focused version of the product and pitch it as superior. And Apple is expected to show that off, uh, show off its own large language model powering Siri at WWDC. I think it's pretty obvious that they can make this work well. Uh, could th- the challenge is going to be when you've got open AI and Google and Microsoft with open AI doing cloud versions, they can use data centers power hungry data centers, but data centers that can really crunch numbers and do things that you can't do on device. Mm -hmm. Apple is going to have to rely on the fact that it has amazing chips on device to pitch this as whatever you can't get on device that you can get in the cloud uh, is not going to matter much because the S9 chip can access and log data for Siri without needing the internet. The A17 Pro chip has a neural engine that's twice as fast as the previous one. We all know how great the M chips are. So I'm guessing this year at WWDC, Apple puts out a series of smart features for all its operating systems that emphasize privacy and security running on device, and they play up their LLMs and other models as being better on device than any other model, and they try very hard never to say the word AI while they're talking about all these features. <laughs> you think they're going to w- have their I own wonder term? What, the, what the Apple AI LLM, et cetera, term will be, you know? I smarts. No, I, I smarts. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee that. I think Tom's right that it will be something that they make up and make it sound like it's their own thing. And well, it's like, it's like it. Apple and spatial reality. Like, okay, mm-hmm. we know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah we yeah. know what you mean. You know? it, it, I, it's just, I mean, Apple does that. It's It's... Companies like to brand their own thing, even if it's something that's similar to what another company is using. I, I mean, I, I use Siri uh, quite often throughout the day. Um, it's not my only smart assistant that I use, um, but uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm wearing a watch where she's never far. And that said, it is extremely limited in what I think it's useful for. Hmm. So I would love to see, besides the obvious, like we've bundled, you know, a new chatbot into Safari, you know, on your mobile device, that kind of thing. I mean, that would be cool. And you can still do that at this point on some level, but I don't know. I mean, I, I wonder if there's going to be any curveball surprises. Yeah. Apple I, intelligence. I, Weird Ami just coined it. Oh, it's that's not bad. Apple intelligence. That's not bad. That actually AI. sounds like something they would do. That is, that is good. That is yeah, good. Then it's still AI and they claim they own the term. Here's the here's the thing, though. I usually try to find things to disagree with Tom about, but I honestly can't with this one. I think this is exactly the path that they'll take, and it is the same path they always seem to take. They will talk big game about security, and then they will introduce features that do seem cool on device. Um, here's the one thing I hope, because on the one hand, you're like, well, maybe cloud computing is a really crucial part of this in terms of speed and and so on and or capabilities or whatever. And, and we don't know until they show us what these are capable of. But uh, what I hope happens is they undersell it like they did Apple Silicon, to me anyway. Uh-huh. Um, when the when the M chips were announced, I went, OK, well, I've been through this transition before. I guess let's hurry up and pull the Band-Aid off. I'm sure it'll be fine, but it'll take a while and it'll be a pain and whatever. I was not only was I wrong about how how amazing those were and how easy that tr- transition was, but they way exceeded even on the lowliest of Mac Minis, way exceeded what I expected out of those M chips. So that being said, 
maybe we'll get surprised again here. There's a chance. I'm trying to be optimistic that yeah. when they get up there and talk about this stuff and talk about it being on device, that in actual use case, we will be blown away. I really hope that that's true. And based on the investment they've made, the buyouts they've made, I don't think they want to enter this sloppily. I don't think this needs to be a whipped together maps competitor that they show too soon that isn't quite baked fully yet. Works great now, but you know, at the time maps was awful. Um, I don't think they can afford that in what is the AI driven future. So I think this has to stick. Whatever they are doing, it has to stick. They're okay with being a little late to the party. Just over undersell me and blow my mind, and and maybe you'll maybe you'll carve out a piece of the AI future for yourself there, Apple. I I think the challenge, unlike the chip, is that you're comparing apples and oranges. Ha ha ha. Uh, <laughs> Literally. With, with the M1 chip. You could compare it to an Intel chip and go, wow, this is much faster and more power efficient. Like I can just tell. With this, you're going to be comparing on device to cloud. Right. And on device can be so impressive. And because you're never using on device, you're going to be like, mm, it's okay. It's not as good as Bard. You know, it's not as good as something else. Uh, but but it's it's going to be a harder sell to to say, like, yeah, 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 but it's not going in the cloud. That's one of those things that. People say they want all the time, but it's like hard to experience the privacy benefit. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're not even noticing the privacy benefit because mm -hmm. the privacy benefit is just happening. Yeah, and so it's a negative. Your... It's a thing that doesn't happen. You don't get breached. Well, you what, exactly. and you know, yeah. if there's any lag, then that's what somebody notices. Is like, oh, I mean, it's like seems kind of slow. Yeah, you know? and the question or, with or, is, you know, if... something's more limited. It it it's hard to convince somebody that the on device experience. And not everybody will agree, but many people want that. They just don't realize that that's what they want. Yeah, and if they can do it, if they can show that, that, that that's really efficient and fast, well, then they've got something. Because then we won't care or notice that something on the cloud is faster or not. And then it's on to the next innovation and somebody will prove it wrong. But for right now, with their install base and everybody who buys into the Apple ecosystem or just phones, they want something fast, reliable, and I hope they... That's what they show us at WWDC. That'd be great. All right. Well, folks, if you've got uh, inside information about this or just a thought, uh, either one, you can email us. Send us your 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 feedback. We we got some great feedback we're going to talk about later in the show about laser printers and more. Uh, join in on the conversation. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Monday, we told you about the rapid rise and success of Pal World. Uh, Pal World made by Pocket Pair is kind of a meme, the Pokemon with guns. Uh, but it launched in early access on Steam and everybody wanted to try it to the tune of 1.8 million concurrent players. 1,864,421 concurrent players on Tuesday, passing Counter-Strike's May 2023 peak to make it the second most concurrent players ever behind PUBG's January 2018 peak of 3.2 million. Uh, Pocket Pair says it has sold 6 million copies of Pal World in its first four days. Now, this is interesting because those numbers are big, but you also just don't hear a lot of gamers praising this game at all. Uh, quite the opposite, in fact. In fact, Pocket Pair had to issue an apology of sorts and also offer a roadmap for some basic features that a lot of people were complaining they didn't have, like player versus player, end game raid bosses, that kind of thing. Also, Pokemon fans are accusing the game of plagiarizing characters that people consider familiar with the Pokemon universe, in part by using AI to create the character models. Nintendo which is a co-owner of the Pokemon franchise, hasn't publicly commented on this specific game on Pal World, but has issued a takedown notice for a video explaining how to mod Pal World to swap in-game characters with Pokemon ones, which, I mean, that's that part of it is not very surprising that Nintendo would not like this. No, All right, yeah. Scott, Scott, I know you've been following this. What do you think is behind the game's crazy sudden popularity besides just i don't know people being mildly curious and what do you think what do you think's going on with this controversy well the meteoric rise of the game kind of out of nowhere in some ways is is all anyone's talking about in my circles and it's a little bit bewildering to be honest because well i think a lot of this is interesting and 
and cutting and sort of part of the overall discussion about tech and the movement into AI and all these other issues. It does it does lean into that. But also, I think the big reason that this is happening is because we are now at 7 million copies sold. By the way, none of the numbers you guys mentioned even uh, includes who is playing it on Game Pass, which it was a day one Game Pass release and also being sold on the Microsoft Store. The only place you can't get this is PlayStation currently. So it's on PC and on uh, Xbox consoles. Um, so without those even being in there, it's just in a massive, crazy, very short term success. And a lot of people are like, no, wait a minute. This doesn't make sense. Why is it like this? So there's a there's there's that part of it. Um, it was originally announced in 2021. And I remember that announcement going, oh, that's a fun joke, I guess, because it's just, yeah. you know, it's Pokemon with guns, like Tom mentioned. And it seemed like it maybe uh, would would have a little flash in the pan, but it seemed like it was OK. And we knew this developer. They made Craftopia and a couple other games. It's not like they were unheard of. Um but it also includes some other stuff. The other thing is everyone's complaining about the Pokemon side of it. If you're looking at actual gameplay, this lifts from things like Tears of the Kingdom, Fortnite, oh, totally. Minecraft, Valheim. I mean, name the game. There's some of this in there. In fact, the developers themselves have come out and gotten in front of it and said, we were heavily inspired by a game called Ark Survival Evolved. If you've played Ark at all, then you kind of know what kind of game this is at its core. It's a survival, open world survival game. You're cutting down trees. You're breaking up rocks. You're building stuff. And uh, you're doing that in this particular case with the help of these not Pokemon, but these pals. Um, not to be confused with all you Europeans and your weird TV standards from the 90s. Forget about that <laughs> for a minute. Um, so anyway, that that's kind of the setup. Now, it's not the first Pokemon-like. There's maybe hundreds of Pokemon-like games out there. Uh, everything from Cassette Beasts to any number of other ones. But nobody cares and nobody talks about it this way. Well, why? Well, I think it's because of the sheer amount of sales combined with the fact that when you look at this game, your first impression is, I don't care which side of this you're on, you feel like you're looking at Pokemon characters, at the very least heavily inspired by Pokemon characters. And there are some that they have shown, some some guys have hacked into the code and, and put models of some Pokemon meshes right into the same mesh as a, a close to equivalent character in Pal World and they line up with near mathematic exactness. So there's some questions about that side of it. The AI accusations kind of have nothing to them. There's no proof. Um, there are actually strict AI rules in both Microsoft stores and uh, Steam. And if these broke any of those rules, we would know that by now. Uh, plus all the sniff tests and everybody trying to check this thing for AI uh, work are not finding it. So, so far that is a baseless accusation that people are just running with. Uh, and I don't know why that's happening. There's no real evidence of it. Now, I played the game. I don't think it's that great. I think it's kind of janky. It's early access, so that's to be expected. Uh, preview in Xbox's case, that's what they call it. And it's not finished, and there's a lot of stuff missing. And there are times where I feel like I'm just playing one of the jankiest games of the year, and it's we're not even that far into January, and it feels a little janky to me. But there are people who really like it. Some people like it just to stick their finger in the eye of Nintendo and Game Freak for, for kind of not innovating the, the Pokemon uh, series very much. And so there's just a lot of factions with a lot of motivations around this thing. Um, one reason people are worried about the AI element is this developer made a game previously called AR Art Imposter, and it uses generative AI as a core mechanic of the game. I've never played this game. Can't really speak to it. It looks a lot like uh, Among Us. So there's another kind of inspiration visual thing happening there. Anyway, there's the bigger conversation, which I do think is interesting and isn't about name calling or telling, some, you know, making accusations online. It's more about iteration in video games and what that actually means. And most games, even the most popular games you'll ever play, are iterative in some way or, or another. Nobody's starting fresh day one with something that is completely different than anyone else. So if yeah, you play Call I mean, of Duty, you're playing you're playing on if you're playing Call of Duty, you're playing on the backs of Doom and Quake and Wolfenstein and you know the earliest prototypes of first person shooters. Uh, yeah. There's no difference here in terms of the survival aspects of yeah. it. The Pokemon part is just visually like a little shocking. And if Nintendo gets involved with lawyers, you'll certainly hear about it. They are a litigious company, but so far they haven't said anything. So I think this is my personal opinion. Give this like another month and a half and no one's talking about this game anymore. Yeah, it just flames high and, and dies out because 
there is nothing special about this. A popular game getting criticized and having unfounded accusations, that's not new. Um, a, a game ha being based on a funny meme coming out and getting a lot of attention, that's not new. What made this I, I, a game ripping off from multiple, you know, uh, or being inspired by multiple uh, other kinds of games, as you pointed out, Scott, that's not new. No. What was it that made this become the second most concurrent players in history? Uh, and listening to you speak, I, I was still grasping for it until I finally realized maybe it's because they're mocking Nintendo mm -hmm. and nobody likes to mock Nintendo because Nintendo is so litigious. So yeah. the fact that they got away with that. And like you said, when you watch the trailer, it's like, Oh, am I watching Zelda or am I watching Pokemon? Is it yeah. Zelda with Pokemons? Like, and then suddenly your, your <laughs> brain goes, well, that would be kind of cool if there were Pokemons and Zelda and they had guns. Like, I think it's a you know, perfect storm of, of confluence here. Yeah. And you're not you're, people to be like, I want to try that. I want to try that in greater <laughs> numbers than you would usually have with a joke game like this. I think you're right. And I and and here's the other thing about it. And I and and if I don't say this, people are gonna call me on it. It is at its core got a pretty good loop. It's a loop I think is janky right now, but it has mm -hmm. with enough polish, it's a fun combination of the things we've talked about, of the things that inspired it, and the, even the things they're poking fun at. There is a strong loop there that is hard for many players to put down. So I think that that's an important aspect. If this was just junk, nobody would care. We'd be done. But it's a playable game with potential. And it's also relatively inexpensive. And so I think these all play a role. It's a little zeitgeisty, like a viral video no one expected. You know how you can't make videos viral? They just happen. It's kind of like that. And the fact that it's a Japanese developer and not some kid in Des Moines doing this, uh, and, and doing it in the face of the biggest Japanese formidable video company of all time, that being Nintendo, there's something attractive about that, to your point. Uh, I think it's all those things. And I think in the end, this thing's ability to survive beyond this will be polishing this game up to be a really good playing game, despite all the controversies, the questions, the accus accusations, because that's what they ultimately want. Otherwise, this will just be remembered as a weird moment and a flash in the pan and some quick money and then that's the end of it so sarah we'll do you have a better handle on it now yeah i mean <clears throat> pardon me i think i, think I don't I do. know i i'm reminded of flappy bird or you know mm -hmm. a, a variety of games that just rocket to like a mm -hmm. crazy height of popularity just because you know yeah, at it, a certain it's point like, it's the momentum carries itself it's the right? momentum yeah exactly yeah. and and you know sometimes it's just a flash in the pan no one can can truly know um it's a it's a mixture of some people legitimately being excited about it or at least you know telling others about it and then the rest of us going well, what's going on here exactly scott you had mentioned earlier you know a lot of this has to do with just the fact that uh when a game is this popular and making money and maybe making fun of that other company who doesn't yeah. like any of those things mm -hmm. yeah. that's where that's where we are right now and yeah, gotta... uh, you know to no one I mean, you could say this about a musician, an artist, a game developer, anyone who says, I am so inspired by this wonderful game. Gosh, one of my favorites. You know, I can only only hope to make a game that great. No one cares about that. That's no. fine. That's no. how we all live. Right. But when it is just sort of like mm, too close um, in, in a way where it's like, and the Pokemon character is holding a gun, then you get into you know, some weird territory. Yeah. And if this thing only sold a hundred thousand copies, the conversation would not be at the crescendo we're at. So sales is a huge yeah. part of this, but then you have to ask, well, why the sales? Like it is a big weird loop of why is this happening now? When two weeks ago, nobody even talked about it. It's like, it was not even a thing on anyone's radar really other than the preview in 2021. So, you know, we, I, we'll keep our eye on it. Of course, bring anything up here that makes any sense to bring up, but it is one of the weirdest gaming stories of I think the last maybe even decade. It's a very odd time. And we'll just have to see how it unfolds. All right. Um, I'm going to check out the mailbag anyway, because I promised people earlier in the show that we would check out the mailbag. <laughs> and I know we're running close on time. Uh, but I, mostly I just want to say uh, we got so many people writing in saying, yes, laser printer. It changed my life. I've been using one for 15 years. Uh, yeah, I, I have to spend more on toner, but uh, I only have to buy it once every five years. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, so that, that's it. That's all I wanted to say is thank you uh, for, for all of those emails. We read every one of 
of them. And it's, it's great to hear from all of you. Keep them coming. Feedback Indeed. at dailytechnewsshow.com. Turns out people care about printers mm -hmm. um, and certainly buying overpriced uh, ink cartridges. Um, Scott, whether or not you do that, uh, we certainly love having you on the show. Today was just, it's perfect. We can't do a Pell World conversation without no. Scott Johnson. Mm -hmm. Let everybody know where they can keep up with the rest of your work. Well, the best place to do that would be over at frogpants.com. And in particular, the show core. So you can just do that same thing and go to the podcast page and there it is. Uh, frogpants.com slash core in fact and uh, that's a video game show we do on Thursdays it's a long format show with some really smart guys that I work with and we talk all about what's going on in gaming including big stories like this whole pal world thing we've all played it too so we have stuff to say check that out that again is at frogpants.com slash core or wherever you get your shows Patrons, stick around for the extended show good day internet the return to the office war appears to be over and remote workers appear to have won we're going to discuss why. You can catch our show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're back tomorrow talking about the tech in his van life with AI for Humans show host Kevin Pereira. Yeah, lives in a van. A lot of tech. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts. Helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>